Dr. Snyashish Nadhi, third year GNB resident at RKM Shiva Pradeshan Bhuvan Institute Medical Sciences, will present. And uh, with us today is Dr. Partho Sharathi Ghosh, uh, who is uh, Associate Professor of Sajira Gangandhar Medical College. So, uh, Snyashish, you share the order on scenario and then we start discussion. Just read the scenario and then wait for our uh, yes, sir. Yeah, shall I start? Yes, yes, okay. Sir. okay sir. Uh, good morning, everyone, and my respected teachers. Uh, this is 58 year old gentleman underwent total colectomy for synchronous sickle and sigmoid growth on postoperative day three. He complains of mild fever and pain and swelling in the right leg. How will you proceed for this case? Okay, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, what is in your mind? Sir, uh, usually on third post-operative the day, uh, the cause of fever um, may be uh, atelectasis or pneumonia or aseptic fever, or it may be uh, post-operative thromboflavitis or uh, deep vein thrombosis as suggested from the history, sir. Uh, there is unilateral swelling in the right leg uh, so, this might be a case of uh, deep vein thrombosis of the lower limbs, okay. in, particularly in the right leg, sir. Okay. Then, what will be your next step? On the one hand, you have uh, suspicion of some causes of post-operative fever, and on the other side, uh, you have a suspicion that the patient might be suffering from a deep vein thrombosis. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, so what uh, another you... thing, Dr. Snyashish, a, a yes, patient has got a fever, pain, and swelling in the right leg. Your yes, suspicion sir. is right. That is the most common situation in the post op period. Yes, what yes, else sir. may be the uh, cause of such, uh, I, if I confine to the leg part, swelling in the leg, fever, pain, apart from deep vein thrombosis, what else can be the reason for such? Uh, leg symptom. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, if the if in this case the uh, swelling is confined to particular right leg only, sir. Yes. But uh, there are other causes of bilateral pedal swelling. Hey, I'm not as, bilateral. Don't go to bilateral. I just this patient has okay, swelling. What else can okay, be there? Sir. They are not okay, very common. This is a common yes, symptom. I, I agree. But can yes, this sir. patient yes, may sir. have a cellulitis in the leg? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. There is possibility, sir. Cellulitis. Lymphedema, cellulitis. Yes. All these uh, possibilities are also there, sir. Yes. Okay, fine. Then how will you proceed means try to understand. This is not confining only to the leg. This is a patient after a major surgery on the third post okay, of So you will okay, cover the uh, global assessment of the patient. How do you proceed? Okay. Okay, sir. Uh, sir, as because uh, the suspicion behind our mind, sir, there is a development already setting in of uh, deep vein thrombosis, sir. Sir, I will first will not ask the patient to mobilize, sir. Then I will go for a thorough physical and clinical examination, sir. And uh, as because the patient is having fever, sir, I will also look for if the patient is having uh, catheterization or any other urinary sign symptoms or not. And also, uh, I, will, uh, uh, I will check for uh, the heart sound, the breath sound, bilateral breath sound, uh, as because it is third post-operative day. So post-operative uh, uh, and also presenting with fever, sir. So there is chance of atelectasis or pneumonia also is there. So I will also go for thorough systemic examination of this patient to rule out any other possibility. And after uh, the systemic and clinical examination is done, I will go for certain investigation for this patient, sir. 
So what are the investigations uh, that now suppose uh, 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 suppose the patient uh, of course in this situation the patient will be catheterized. Suppose the patient oh. is catheterized. Uh, uh, you have uh, a small amount of diminished breath sound in the right lower chest. What will be your next step? Uh, sir, uh, I will go for a routine routine complete hemogram, sir, for this patient, and chest X-ray PA view for this patient, and uh, I will send the urine samples for routine and culture sensitivity, and I will also, uh, if the patient is not so ill, then I will also go for a duplex scanning of the bilateral lower limb, sir. Okay. So even if you have uh, some other suspicions, uh, you cannot wait for, well, it cannot explain the swelling of the right limb. So you have a strong suspicion that the patient might have um, uh, something, I mean, something like diverting. So you will ask yes. for uh, I. So is there, uh, whether you sir, have any... Uh, in the history also, sir, I will, I will also like to take any previous history of... Uh, uh, incidence of DVT like that or not. So as to categorize the patient in the later stage, so as to uh, ease of treatment could be done. Initially, I will uh, do a thorough physical and clinical examination and also sir, these certain investigations as you told, as I told sir, and you told sir. And uh, uh, Sinashi, don't forget that this patient underwent colectum. So in yes. the evaluation also, you should understand whether this patient is uh, progressing well in the posterior period has no complication related to the collective itself. That means there might yes, be sir. weak, yes. there might be abdominal distension, he might have abdominal yes, pain. So when yes, you go sir. for assessment, you should do the yes, routine assessment of the patient. Yes, sir. You not only the deep vein thrombosis. You should also confine about the patient uh, normal progression in the posterior period in view of a collective. Yes, sir. Okay. And then yes, also you should review his input output chart, whether he started an oral feed, whether yes, he has been mobilized in the bed or he's yes, confined sir. to the bed. So they are all yes, important sir. to understand about the a possibility of deep vein thrombosis. Yes, sir. Definitely. Duplex scanning. What are the what are the features in duplex scanning? You think that yes, this patient has got deep vein thrombosis? Uh, sir, duplex scanning is a combination of ultrasound. A mode B study along with the flow of the vessel, sir. Sir, in normal patients, uh, first is compressibility. With the probe, sir, the vein is compressed. And the, if the patient hasn't got any problem... Before, before compression, what do you find in the vein? If the vein is thrombosed? Yes, sir. Sir, uh, eco, echogenicity will be there, sir. If there is a thrombus, there will be, sir hyper echogenic and according to the chronic according as per the chronicity of the thrombus the echogenicity will also in the post -op this is post -op period this is not chronic thrombus this yes, sir. yes sir. Thrombus. it actually yes. appears homogeneous with low echogenicity yes sir yes sir then completely so gone what else compressibility uh then sir the flow uh if the veins are not completely occluded what occluded, then it is suggestive of uh, deep vein thrombus. Not completely occluded. You are on the probe on the vein. Uh, yes, sir. Do you ask the patient to do breathe, inspire, expire? Yes, sir. What yes, sir. yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sir, uh, there is a variation in inspiration and expiration. Yes, sir. In duplex scanning, sir. And uh, if the uh, variation is uh, variation is present in normal individual. What happens in patient having deep vein thrombosis? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The variation is present in normal patients, sir. The variation is lost in DVT, in case of DVT, sir. Yes. Excellent. So, actually, you ask for a compression duplex ultrasonography. And yes. in compression duplex ultrasonography, what Sarah perfectly said, the best thing if you ever can find a thrombus, which is identified by a homogeneous low ecogenicity mass. That's so, that's so. And... Um, if you cannot find the thrombus, then you try to go for a compressibility. In normal yes. cases, if you gently compress the vein, the vein becomes collapsed and this creates an illusion of weight. And uh, it, if uh, it is not present, then you should look for the venous flow dynamics. That means the normal respiratory barriers 
uh, variation or the manual sub compression which causes generally causes augmentation due to doppler flow pattern yeah, will yes. be lost in these cases so very yes, good. Sir. but before uh, now uh, now uh, um, any other test you want to perform <coughs> In the all in all the cases, I what I want to mean actually, whether yes, in sir. all the cases of su suspected deep vein thrombosis, you would like to go for uh, some I mean a duplex ultrasonography. Uh, not all the patients. Uh, so the risks for the deep vein thrombosis one is pulmonary thromboembolism and another is so that is a the that is all together so keeping that in mind that. sir i will also like to rule out any possibilities of uh, pulmonary thromboembolism in this no, patient no. Sir. no 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 i'm not going into the pulmonary thrombosis i'm only okay. considering a deep vein thrombosis at present at present okay right. sir okay sir now you are suspecting that this suppose there are uh, I mean, uh, there are few cases of uh, suspected deep vein thrombosis in your ward. Whether mm -hmm. in all the cases you will ask for a duplex ultrasound initially. Can you start therapy based on your clinical suspicion? No, sir. I want to now, prophylactically. Uh, yes. Wait, wait. yes, Dr. Yes, Gosa. sir. Uh, yes, sir. sir. What I want to mean, what is the sensitivity of, uh, I mean, duplex ultrasonography in case of deep Sensitivity, sir. Mm. Sir, percentage, I don't remember, sir. Well, what do you mean? Sensitivity. Low or very high sensitivity? Very high, 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 high sensitivity. It is very good, sir. It is a very good diagnostic tool to, yes. for the assessment of DVT, sir. There is a, a trick for the frame. That one thing that if the patient is very much symptomatic, the sensitivity of this test is very higher but remember in many of the cases you may get asymptomatic diabetes diabetes where yes. the sensitivity is actually high in the proximal veins like common femoral vein but it is very low for the isolated cup vein, cup, uh, vein thrombosis it's yes. around uh, 10 to 15 percent only so if you have a uh, if you have a low risk uh, suspicion then in those cases you actually uh, have to ask for a D dimer. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. D dimer becomes less sensitive in uh, in advanced cases, but it is very very sensitive test in uh, I mean in the uh, low risk cases. So yes, if sir. you have uh, in I mean uh, I mean uh, you, if you have a low risk patient for a DVT, then you have to go for. A D dimer test. D dimer test, yes, and that is a fibrin degradation. Yes, product. yes, and so this is a trick sometimes. If it is, uh, huh, yes, sir. If it is high, then it is in in this case it might be uh, the diagnosis of our case will be confirmed for DVT. But if it is uh, not, uh, sorry, sir. If it is not positive, then it, the DVT is ruled out. But if the uh, D dimer is positive, then I will go for other tests because uh, certain other conditions will also raise the value of D-dimers. Uh, dimer it is, is indicative, indicative of uh, indicative of uh, different thrombosis. So if the D-dimer is normal, there is no DVT. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But if it is high, it doesn't mean high, that the patient then there is suspicion DVT. for DVT, sir. Because it may get it, it may be raised because of myocardial infarction in a post-operative yes. scenario in pregnancy in many occasions it may be raised. So again, yes. you need to come back to your uh, imaging modalities. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. isn't it? Now, yes, sir. your imaging modality cannot find that whether uh, I mean your duplex ultrasound cannot find that uh, whether there is any um, uh, any clot or not. What will be your next uh, step, uh, sir? Uh... MR venography can also be tried, but uh, it is in, it's not done usually, sir. But it is uh, confer, it is most. If you're in a peripheral setup, why do you don't have yes, the... sir. Uh, MR venography cannot be done there. Uh, what else can be done to confirm that, yes, the veins are thrombosed? Yes, sir. Uh, 
This is ascending venography. Ascending venography, yes, sir. Uh, but it is not from uh, sir, uh, source uh, thrombus as a filling defect, sir. Yes, sir. So, whatever, in any form of venography, depending upon the uh, setup you are working, you can perform yes, it. So, yes, sir. If, if, so, if we consider the diagnostic modality of our deep vein thrombosis, if it is a low risk asymptomatic patient, go for D dimer first. If the D dimer yes, is normal, DVT is excluded. If D dimer is high, you have to ask for a duplex ultrasonography. In otherwise high risk or symptomatic patient, you go for a duplex ultrasound first. If you can find something, you stop there. If you cannot find something, you can ask for other venography in form of uh, MRCT or, or uh, ascending venography as I said in this way. Right? Yes, so this yes. is actually the diagnostic protocol that you should use in the setting of DVD. Right? Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Uh, Sneashish, uh, yes, sir. having fever may have tachycardia. Yes, sir. Absolutely, and, sir. And, and what is the correlation in patient with DVT, fever and tachycardia? Uh, so one of the sir, if, important clinical yes. pointer. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, so there is a point uh, in heart, heart rate in uh, when categorization of this patient according to the modified Wells criteria. So uh, heart rate, if there is heart rate more than 100, sir. No, no, so, no. What I'm saying is, you see, for each yes, degree sir. rise of temperature, there is yes, 10, 10, 10, 10 rise in, uh, 10 rise in heart rate. Yes, sir. This tachycardia is out of proportion to fever. Patient yes, sir. Yes, sir. Fever, I have to rule out that. Quite high. So this is one of the important clinical parameter patient having deep vein thrombosis. The tachycardia yes, is out of proportion to the fever. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, uh, you have just uttered the term that modified Wells criteria. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Can you get my point? Yes, yes sir. Modified Wells criteria. Sir. What is sir. your idea about a modified Wells criteria? Uh, sir, modified will score. Uh, there is uh, two scores written uh, over textbook, sir. Sir, one is uh, sir yeah. for predict predicting the DVT, sir itself, and another one is uh, for the uh, prediction of a th pulmonary thromboembolism, sir. Right? Yes, sir. Two, two sir. Right. Yeah. So, if you follow, I am not going into the details of the criteria because it is very difficult to remember. Uh, and uh, I mean, utter those terms in the examination, but you have to keep a chart to follow it. But yes. just think, but I want to go into the philosophy of that. In one criteria, you are actually predicting DVT by considering the condition of the limb and some supporting evidences, right? Yes. So yes. if you want to pick up a DVT limb in one hand, you have to look for the risk factors which are present Right? Absolutely. So sir. these Absolutely. factors for DVT, this is number one. And number yes, two, sir. the findings in the lip. Right? Yes, so this yes, is sir. one sort of wealth criteria. Now, even on the basis of this, actually, the probability can be expected. A score yes, of sir. minus two to zero low, low probability. In, in this low probability form. cases, actually, you have to go for D dimer test. Am I clear? Okay, sir. Okay, sir. And for the moderate and high probability, you can go for a duplex, right? So okay. this is okay. this is the uh, significance of one modified Wells criteria, which is just uh, following the limb condition and the supported uh, I mean, risk factors. And the yes. other one is actually for prediction of pulmonary embolism phases, yes. cases, yes. right? Where the patient may have a pulmonary embolism. Yes, sir. Right. I will yes. come to that to that. So this is the philosophy of using how to use the uh, modified uh, well striking. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. So now then you have a suspicion of deep vein thrombosis, and uh, patient has all. Uh, what are the other classic features of deep vein thrombosis apart from pain and fever? Sir, clinically, uh, there will be pain and fever. Some patients may not experience the pain, sir. Yes. Uh, 
some patients may experience a some patient yes, silent dvt no symptoms yes sir yes sir no yes sir absolutely no sir no swelling yes so, sir yes sir a situation of known as silent dvt yes sir some patients sir may experience pruritic type of chest pain sir what uh, is due to complaint in the leg what is leg sir dvt is there this sir is asking about the dvt teacher the dvt teacher what is the dvt what patient can notice and tell you <clears throat> this is described as acute varicosity that means yes sir there may be uh, dilatation of the vessel uh, appearance of acute varicosity in the superficial veins because deep vessel yes sir yes sir and when you examine the patient do you need to uh, do the special test for diagnosing dvt yes sir homans test no, sir no don't do oh, okay sir okay sir okay sir. Okay, sir. okay sir we are described but these are not to be Uh, express because not, now not practiced modality. nowadays now you yes. have more modality to diagnose it is not necessary to do squeeze a calf muscle uh, to yes. put this sign which can uh, lay, lead to a, a thrombus being broken okay. broken and go to the <laughs> lung okay sir okay, okay, so you have now other modalities to confirm your diagnosis okay sir fine uh, any okay. other severe condition of the limbs in dvt when there are color changes we can look Yes, sir. Yeah, and there are two conditions: phlegmasia, uh, uh, alba, and phlegmasia serula dolens. What is that? Serula dolens. Yes, sir. Sir, in alba, the color first, the color is white, and in now why color serula? is alba has something else also. <coughs> yes, sir. Alba is not uh, only. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, in alba there is uh, involvement of. Uh, major deep veins sparing the collateral sir and there is involvement of arterial and venous both occlusion sir yes so that and became... in serula yes sir it becomes pale sir and uh, in serula sir there is a involvement of uh, only uh, uh, i mean the isolated venous occlusion in serula yes, sir and it uh, remains as a uh, blue but the limbs are at threat what is important why you need to know actually these limbs are at threat at least in many of the cases you have to sacrifice the limbs it may be needed so our approach will be a bit different by managing these cases of dvt that is the uh, now how would you like to uh, manage this case now your duplex ultrasound has picked up that yes there is a thrombus in the calf veins only just follow my points your deep vein has thrombus which is in the calf vein son okay sir uh, uh sir the management uh, includes two parts sir one is uh, pharmacological and another one is, is mechanical sir in pharmacological setting sir uh, subcutaneous low molecular weight heparin is used and uh, if the patient has got some renal impairment then iv unfractioned heparin can be used and if the patient is uh, sensitive towards the heparin or drugs then fondaparinox which is a indirect factor tna inhibitor and uh, bivali uh, rudin direct thrombin inhibitor can also be used and uh, once the patient is uh, stabilized and uh, Mm, then oral anticoagulant uh, shall also start when? and patient... when you start oral anticoagulant you have started the patient parenteral uh, any of these what you have mentioned low yes, middle sir. yes sir or sir heparin is preferred what is your preference we get both you have access to the both lmw and unfresh heparin what you yes, like sir. to use what will you prefer sir once again sir i didn't get if you have access to both lmw yes sir normal heparin and unfractioned heparin what is the yes, preferred sir. mode of treatment at, at the present uh, sir low molecular weight heparin sir. why why do you prefer sir, sir it has got better uh, uh... nahi heparin gives very good uh, anticoagulation yes sir is a post op scenario Yes, the sir. risk of bleeding is more if you use unfractioned heparin, number one, and unfractioned okay, heparin needs monitoring. 
Yes, sir. Monitoring. Monitoring of the activated partial thromboplastin yes. tank. NWH. <coughs> INR. Efficacy yeah. is good. Yes, sir. Government, the incidence of post op bleeding is less if you are using on yes, the sir. second or third post op bleeding. Yes, sir. Okay. And then when do you start oral anticoagulant? Uh, sir, it is uh, started. It can be started as soon as uh, the patient, uh, I mean, is able to take the oral medicine, sir. Even within, uh, even within twenty-four to forty-eight hours, sir. Yes. And it should be continued up to the three to six months, depending upon upon the uh, patient profile, sir. When did you take off the parenteral uh, therapy? I mean, when did you take off? Take off. Sir, target INR. Yes, sir. When you discontinue heparin, suppose yes, you sir. have put the patient on the molecular wet heparin in the third post-operative day, you started oral anticoagulant on the fourth post-operative day. Yes, sir. Yeah, now, whether when you want to discontinue low molecular wet heparin. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, uh, the target INR is uh, 2.5 to 3.5, sir. So, uh, so what do you think? If you start oral anticoagulant, how much time it takes to achieve this uh, uh, INR value? <coughs> Achieved in 24 hours? You may achieve the INR value by only using heparin as well. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Sir. Now, whether you want to withdraw the, uh, I mean, uh, withdraw the heparin next day. Actually, actually, the oral anticoagulant takes about 40 to 72 hours to achieve. Yes, sir. So, yes, sir. so as long as it uh, takes time to achieve, achieve that and the oral anticoagulant, anticoagulant, as long as it is, uh, I mean, 24 to 48 hours after its administration, it starts working. So, till then, I may have to continue to this IV or subcutaneous therapy, sir. To actually, to achieve the goal that you were that you were waiting for, the anti oral anticoagulant takes at least five days, if not okay, ten sir. days. So you need to continue both the therapy uh, for the five days at least. Then you withdraw the low molecular weight heparin or unsaturated okay, heparin. Okay. What is it? Okay, sir. Right now, think of I just am giving a, a situation. While doing this surgery, when you enter the abdomen, you saw a growth in the cecum, you draw uh, a growth in the uh, sigmoid colon, which has been addressed surgically, but at the same time, you saw a big metastatic lesion in the liver, which you did not address at the time of surgery. Yes, sir. Now, how you want to <coughs> modify your uh, anticoagulant uh, I mean, yes, therapy sir. in the post-operative period? Yes, sir. The... Uh... As I al already have told, sir, <coughs> sir, depending upon the case scenario, I have to, we have to decide, sir, how long the patient will take the anticoagulant therapy. As you said, sir, uh, there is evidence of metastasis in the liver, sir. The patient becomes the high group and uh, lifelong anticoagulation therapy is recommended, at least, if not possible, if uh, at least for six months, sir. Whether you will start oral anticoagulant in the form of warfarin or like this? <coughs> uh, sir, warfarin is... Uh, uh, For active warfarin. malignancy cases, actually you are supposed to continue with low molecular weight heparin or not. Yes, you were not... A, you are not... Uh, yes, there is no recommendation for giving oral anticoagulant when there okay. is active malignancy. Okay, sir. Right. But again, if you can, again, in this case, if we remove, do a metastatectomy after a few months, again, yes, the sir. patient becomes inactive for the malignancy and you can continue with the rest. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. So, you said you'll give the anticoagulant for six months. What are the situations six. where you need uh, anticoagulant for quite longer time, maybe lifelong? Uh, sir, uh, as in case of uh, high risk patients like uh, previous history of DVT or pulmonary thromboembolism and uh, any, any uh, case, aged, I, aged, uh, any sorry, sir. Aged is not the only indication. If he's uh, age, 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 obesity, uh, sorry, sir, uh, and carcinoma. What do you mean by thrombophilia? Yes, sir, thrombophilia. There are certain conditions like Bichet's disease, and all these cases, 
you have also but have to use that. Else, something else also defines somophilia. Some some test. We are the patient who has some congenital deficiency of some of the important factors. Like factors like factor C protein is or yes. factor three is uh, yes sir. One is antithrombin three. These are all yes, sir. Uh, deficiency of coagulation factors. Yes, sir. So, so there is there is something where you actually do not uh, cannot find a cause. There are recurrent episodes of uh, venous th uh, thromboembolic uh, disease. So in those cases, you actually the patient is very young. Uh, in those cases, actually you must think of whether you are dealing with uh, some disorders which may be persistent. Remember, among these disorders, they are they are not all congenital. Yes, sir. All, yes sir. almost factor five latent mutation is actually most common and the highest chance of uh, producing recurrent DVD. But antiphospholipid yes. antibody is not a congenital condition which we commonly think of. It's actually an acquired condition. Am I clear? Yes, sir. Okay. Right. So you have to look for whether they are the patient is having a persistent hypercoagulable state or not. Yes, sir. Right. Now, yes, sir. I was just asking, uh, you are training that, yes, we will go for an anticoagulant therapy in case of, but is there any other policy in case of an isolated, I mean, calf vein thrombosis? Yes, sir. What uh... is that? More minimalistic approach. Now people are thinking of some recommendations are there in sub guidelines they are following. Yes, sir, we uh, temporary. Uh, if uh, if I have to manage the DVT on temporary basis, uh, like for uh, certain surgeries, patient is about to undergo. In these scenarios, IVC filter. No, no, no. no. IVC oh, filter is altogether a different ball. Game. In these cases, as it is confined to the distal vein, some guidelines now they are telling that you can remain observant in these cases and go for serial ultrasounds. If okay, are doing a repeat ultrasound after seven days, doesn't either the situation is dissolved or something, you need not to start anticoagulant therapy. But if it progresses, then you go for anticoagulant therapy. Right. Okay, so these okay, are sir. only for remember, these are not for all DVDs. DVDs yes, which are low risk, who are confined to the distal, I mean in the calf veins, are only subjected to this lesion. But okay, generally sir. for proximal lesion, we always go for an anticoagulant therapy. Now, okay, uh, one thing, uh, yeah, what is the pro the problem? We all know that problem with uh, deep vein thrombosis is twofold actually. One development of pulmonary embolism, which is an acute complication developing out of deep vein thrombosis. And mm. another one is actually a post-thrombotic limb, right? Now, yes, considering yes. the complication or the uh, happening of post-thrombotic limb, what is the consensus or what is the thinking of the, uh, I mean, the thinking of the present guidelines? Whether we should continue with this or we should offer some other therapy to these patients. Mm. Other therapies means I mean, sir, the newer and uh, novel antiquaries. That is an oral therapy, actually. I mean, yes. some uh, invasive procedures. If now the world is trying to deal towards the invasive management of acute deep vein thrombosis. Yes, sir. Uh, sir. Uh, if, if thrombus involves a major veins. Yes, sir. Is there venous a... recanalization, stenting, venous bypass procedure, all these things can be done in the yes, surgery. The venous bypass, the catheter directed thrombolysis or yes, placement sir. of a stent inside the thrombus. So like this, so you want to recap, they try, they, people are trying to say that you can, if you immediately recanalize the system, the chance of destruction of valves are less 
So these patients are probably going less chance of development of DVD in future. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. So it is not well established at present, but definitely more and more people are switching to uh, this concept nowadays. Okay, sir. Uh, how, how will you suspect that patient is developing a pulmonary embolism in the background of DVT? What are the pointers? Yes, sir. Uh, the patient, uh, sir, will complain of uh, uh, sudden onset pruritic chest pain, sir. Yes. Uh, uh, then there might maybe also the features of uh, uh, pulmonary artery hy hypertension. A right atrial enlargement. Investigative finding. Clinical. Clinically. Chest pain. What else? If there are uh, a chest right pain, hemoptysis, hemoptysis, yes. sir, also may also be yes. there. And and depending on the extent of uh, embolization, patient may breathless is also. Yes, sir. Breathless. So these are the classic features of uh, uh, and, and can there be sudden death? Episodes of sudden death. How? Oh. What is the situation? Patient may have sudden death. Patient was due for discharge home, and in the morning, then <coughs> died in the ward. What is the situation? Sir, oh, sir, the large thrombus gets dislodged from the peripheral vein, and it get, uh, gets carried out carried to the lung. Not lung. Uh, ultimately, lung to it can kill the patient. It can occlude the whole pulmonary arterial artery. Yes. Bifurcation. Complete occlusion of the pulmonary artery can cause sudden death. Sudden death, yes. If the humbus goes to periphery of the lung, one lung is there, uh, patient may have symptoms, but patient will not die suddenly. Sudden yes, death sir. is due to acute occlusion of the acute pulmonary artery. occlusion of the pulmonary artery. Yes, sir. What will happen if you, if there is occlusion of the pulmonary artery, the right ventricle actually cannot work? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So that is the reason. And that also helps us in uh, choosing the management in case of pulmonary embolism as well. Yes, sir. So, any investigation which can help in diagnosis of pulmonary embolism? Uh, sir, uh, simple bedside ECG uh, can be done to diagnose the okay, pulmonary embolism. ECG may have some straight pattern. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The uh, more uh, confirmatory, sir. Confirmatory uh, ECG echo can also be done. And uh, for the confirmation of the diagnosis, the CT pulmonary angiogram yes. or uh, helical CT, spiral CT. Yes. Anything this else? can also be done, sir. Yes. So previously, we, in perfusion, ventilation, decrease can cut out, sir. It was done. Yes, sir. It was done previously. Yeah. But nowadays, uh, in uh, as because uh, it's not done easily in our clinical practice. Yes, sir. CT okay. pulmonary angiogram, you, if available, you, sir. Will you really do an echocardiography to pick up a case of pulmonary embolism? Sir, echocardiogram, there is certain features which are suggestive of uh, pulmonary embolism, like uh, echo can detect the echogenicity in the pulmonary artery itself, and there may be features of right ventricular hypertrophy and uh, the, as because yes, those are the right the ventricular pressure is... signs of Pulmonary embolism. Yes, Primarily, sir, it can so detect the thrombus. Doesn't, the... Yes, it is, it is very difficult to pick up a pulmonary embolism in ECO. So, the only investigation, if you suspect a case of pulmonary embolism, is to go for a CT and angio. But I mean, CT angio, right. So, yes, you sir. ask for a CT, that is the most sensitive. Now, you are you are telling about an alt, uh, an, I mean, an, I mean, an ECG. That can be done at the bedside before you are writing a requisition yes, for CT scan. Yes, what is the classical finding that we see in case of, in ECG? Uh, sir, there is a sinus tachycardia, right axial deviation, and uh, right ventricular strain pattern is also there, sir. Like in TOA inversion in V1 to V4 and uh, Two three VF, sir. What is S one Q T three three? Yes, sir. S one Q T three three pattern in, uh, I mean, deep S wave in uh, lead one, uh, Q wave in lead three, and inverted T wave uh, also in lead three. Sir. Excellent.
So in the uh, chest, it's like V1 to V4. There is, uh, I mean, uh, there is T wave inversion, and as well yes, there is S1 Q T P3. That means the deep yes. S, S waves in uh, uh, lead one, and in deep three Q and Q waves. So that is yes. what it is now. So you have to go for. Uh, I think you should ask for a, I mean a CT again in case of um, in case of suspected pulmonary embolism. Pulmonary. Yes, sir. Sir, one thing I forgot to mention, sir, in DVT prophylaxis, I'd also like to like mechanical portion prophylaxis. There no, are certain... will, we are discussing oh, okay, about the okay. treatment of the treatment. patient, not okay, asking about the prophylaxis. Okay, sir. Okay. Uh, now, then you have a patient of deep brain thrombosis and you are suspecting that patient might develop pulmonary embolism. What are the measures? Yes. Uh, the first measure is start treatment. Yes, sir. Anticoagulants. Yes, Anticoagulants, yes, sir. And so what prophylactic is? dose, sir, in doxaparin 40. It's not prophylactic, no. no? Okay. Establish DBT. It cannot be prophylactic. Establish DBT, yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's a therapeutic dose of therapeutic dose of yes, sir. Yes. And then what else you may offer the patient to prevent pulmonary embolism? This is being done in here in Kolkata. You said earlier. Earlier you uh, want to say that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, pharmacological, apart from pharmacological therapy is a compression stockings. Is that and, no, 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 no. Pharmacological is no. You have, I mean, embolus which are ready to go to the pulmonary circulation. Oh, okay, okay. Waiting okay, for. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Uh, sir, uh, we, sir, uh, from uh, the thrombus uh, catheterization. Can you, can you prevent it by putting a mechanical barrier? Yes, sir. IVC means. Yes, IVC. IVC, IVC filter. IVC filter. You know, filter sorry, IVC filter. So, yes. what are the indications of IVC? What is uh, the role of IVC filter in the management of deep vein thrombus? Sir, in case of very high risk patients, like previous history of uh, DVT or pulmonary embolism, and uh, in very old and obese patients, sir, and uh, patients undergoing certain surgeries where there is a very high chance of uh, development of DVT. No, in no, these no. cases, no, no. risk for DVT is not, uh, you don't put a filter when the patient does not have a established DVT. I like to understand. Yes, patient sir. has established DBT. Now you yes. consider whether to put a filter or not. Okay, sir. One is if the patient has got a loose thrombus. Okay, sir. Has got a loose thrombus. These are the thrombus which are likely to break and go for. Go to the lung. And patient has minimal symptoms. One okay, see, it's not a major thrombus going occurring in the whole pulmonary trunk. Patient may have small thrombus. If the patient has minimal symptoms. Mm -hmm. And you suspect the patient is developing pulmonary embolism, you can put a filter to prevent further thrombus being going up. Okay, sir. Don't put a uh, filter suspecting the patient will develop DVT. No. Suppose if, in this particular case that we are discussing today, suppose uh, when you are suspecting a DVT, you are having 100 ml of blood every day in the drain. Am I clear? Yes, sir. Okay, sir. Right. So, patient is uh, having a bleeding episode as a post-operative complication in this particular scenario as well. So, what? Uh, whether you will offer the patient heparin? Mm. The patient is also having an established DVT in the proximal veins in this particular case. Again, the patient is having some bleeding which is... Uh, present in the drain every day. Uh, so how will you manage this case? Uh, sir, the target INR being 2.5 no, no, to 3.5. Target... Okay, that's sir. fine. That's fine. The target INR is something. Suppose you have a target INR of 1. Point, uh, you have an INR of 1.5 in this particular place. Whether you want to escalate it? Because the patient is bleeding from the drain. Uh, from the, I mean, there is blood in the drain. Every yes, day sir. you are evacuating the drain and 
next day there is 100 okay sir uh there is a bleeding disorder within uh, temporary ivc filter complete, sir. the so patient is a high risk for bleeding in this case if yes you, sir yes sir if you escalate in, in the case, anticoagulant sir. therapy the patient will bleed more so yes, sir. these are in some this conditions case, in this settings uh, temporary yes. ivc filter can be excellent so when there is a high chance of active bleeding in the post operative period where you cannot offer any sort of anticoagulation to the patient you can put an IVC filter for a temporary purpose. The problem with the IVC filter is this. Number one, it can allow some small thrombus to its course, number one. And yes. number two, as you put it through the periphery, peripheral vein, and the patient is a high risk patient for formation of DVT, again, there is a high chance of formation of DVT at that site. So we don't prefer IVC filter nowadays. If we want even to put it or it becomes mandatory we put it for a temporary period and then as soon as possible we can retrieve so that we can retrieve, retrieve the um, IGC filter. Okay sir. Isn't it? Okay. Yes. What are the measures for uh, preventing deep vein thrombosis in a patient like this? Sir early mobilization of the patient. Before that uh, pre-op before that. Stop. Before that. Pre -op, uh, pre -op and post -op. Yeah. Yes sir. So pre-op, sir, uh, uh, pre-op, sir, to reduce the stress uh, for the patient. Reduce uh, the stress means what? Yes, sir. Uh, sir, stress. the fasting is... Yes, sir, pre-operatively, pre-operatively glue. And I, I kept you in the bed for about 15 days. Does yes, it sir. the risk? No, no, no. Yes, sir, it is absolutely very high risk, sir. So, so try to minimize... Minimize the hospital stay. Yes, sir. 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 Yes, bring down the duration of surgery the early, yes sir yes, what sir. do in the intraoperative early uh, intraoperative uh, you see a lot of so opiate and uh, use uh, less use of opiate analgesics uh, uh, no, 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 before that intra intra intraoperative intra can you Quite move abroad. on rolling the blood inside the cup Quite pressure on the cup muscle number one yes, assistant sir. should not be leaning on the patient legs huh? no okay. pressure Second is, uh, you can use, if the patient is mid-risk or high-risk patient, you can use uh, uh, elastic stock in it while yes, patient is being operated. Next is, now you have some devices. You have pneumatic compression Compressive device. devices, intermittent pneumatic While pneumatic patient is undergoing major surgery under long time, uh, this yes. pneumatic device can uh, press the leg. The in it works similar like the cup yes. yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, but the problem of giving anticoagulant during surgery or before surgery is there is little risk of bleeding. So bleeding, many people yes, not give pre-op anticoagulant. Maybe they give after 12 hours of surgery. Oh, surgery so yes. Intra-op, you should try to avoid prolonged pressure on the cuff. Yes. You try to uh, release pressure on the cuff by keeping the ankle elevated. You can use yes, a compression device or you can use a pneumatic Pneumatic compression device intermittent focus. Okay. So avoid DVT during surgery and the post op. Post op period, sir, uh, early immobilization of the patient, then profile, DVT profile axis therapeutically. No, in, again, yes, in, in, the, in the post op period, you have to stratify the patient. Yes, sir. The post op period, whether you give mechanical profile axis, you will give the patient uh, uh, pharmacological therapy, all depends on the stratifying the patient. How do you yes, think sir. this patient is high risk or mid or low risk? Uh, yes, sir. I have to categorize the patient. Uh, if patient there is a... why, why this patient will fit in? Yes, sir. Uh, yes. This patient of uh, 58 years old yes. and uh, undergone a major surgery. So probably uh -huh. high, uh -huh. high, high. For sir. what? Sir, risk factor, uh, sir. Uh, for what? Malignancy. Abdominal, abdominal and malignancy, sir. Malignancy. Abdominal, pelvic surgery, pelvic, pelvic surgery. All these are high risk. Major yeah, pelvic. 
He is a yeah, high risk patient. What are the factors in uh, uh, risk stratification? What are the things? Uh, sir, age, yes. age, risk, age risk factors. Yes. Uh, obesity. And, uh, obesity. I am asking and... the critical part of what are the yes, sir. Yes, sir. features for? Uh, sir, major medical illnesses like in uh, heart, lung disease, diabetes, uh, inflammatory bowel disease, uh, in case of major trauma or burns. And this patient, what I'm saying is okay. So, patient having your this patient is uh, above, sir, 40 years, this age sir. is 58. Yes. And now the patient is having carcinoma and undergoing surgery, underwent surgery in the abdomen for longer for carcinoma, time. sir, for longer time. Once major surgery, sir. So, define uh, uh, 30 minutes, 30, 30 minutes. minutes, yes, yes, sir. So, this okay. patient is definitely yes. among the high risk, high yes. risk, the patient, the high risk. You should take all the measures free of yes, intra op and post op. Yes, ideally, this patient should receive pharmacological prophylaxis. Yes, sir. recommendation is that or both or both. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. A low risk patient, uh, uh, you can go for a mechanical only, but in moderate pharmacological prophylaxis is actually better than in action than mechanical one. So in very really high risk patients, actually you can go with both. What is the what is the problem or what are the con, what is the why you cannot use this mechanical uh, profile access? Yes, uh... that you must all that we always don't do even in chronic venous insufficiency. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That must be seen before you advise a compression stuff. This patient has maybe some other. Uh, vascular problem where this compression may aggravate that yes sir what uh, is that sir one scenario is uh, with uh, when the uh, different thrombosis has already no 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 no, 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 no. Yes, any sir. other system which is very close to your venous system <laughs> sir we peripheral arterial disease yes very yes. really good yes, yes. obviously arterial disease if you have that then you cannot use it right Yes, sir. No. Yes, sir. What now? I just I want to ask one thing uh, at the end that uh, in case of that, if you are a and uh, I mean, uh, and uh, dolen, what yes, will be your approach? Because there is a chance of limb loss. <coughs> Uh, sir, pharmacological approach should uh, shall be there. No, that we do in all cases of DVD. Yes, sir. Uh, so that is a severe form of severe form of so yes, sir, DVD. You either offer an endovascular interventional procedure, or if it is not available, sometimes you have to go for fasciotomy. To release the pressure yes, and yes, to save the limb. That must be kept in mind that even DVT cases sometimes may develop compartment syndrome as well and may benefit, get, uh, may benefit, may, be ben may benefit from, uh, I mean, uh, face your tongue. Yes, sir. Okay. Madam, Madam, any comment? Madam Banerjee? Uh, no, sir. Uh, you completed everything. <laughs> Just the duration of the operation is another risk. Yes, yes. Uh, that was left out. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. 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 Good. Uh, you see, in the exam, your all confines should be the scenario presented and keep on uh, confining to that particular scenario. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay.